This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. It was just a few days ago that we were last together. Just six days have passed since our last show. Now, I've had several pressing things that I've had to do and spend some time on with one of the companies uh, that I own and with one of the ministries that I serve. But that was six days ago. That isn't long. But a lot has transpired in our nation over the last six days. So I want you to take a moment and think. The pace of change is remarkable. Our nation is being taken apart piece by piece in every direction. Just think about it. There are literally 20 different things that I could speak about right now that would grab your attention and let you know that we must take a stand. But I had to choose one thing. And every new day, the next pillar of our civilization, of our nation, of our faiths, whatever they may be, I am in particular a Reformed Baptist. But no matter who you are, everything is being torn to the ground, assisted usually by those that we have put in charge. And so much is happening that it is hard to keep up with all that is being deconstructed. The disrupting and dismantling of life as we know it. But in just six days, in six short days since we last came together, a lot has happened. And those that are seeking to change everything around you are taking the boil frog approach. Incrementally, bit by bit by tiny bit. Not all of once, of course, because this is about controlling you and gaining control over your life, over your freedom, over your choices, over your future. And they are softening you up with body blows to freedom every single day. And they're trying to get you accustomed to totalitarianism. And they won't do it in one fell swoop. Because it's disturbing to have a bunch of jackbooted thugs show up at your door overnight. People will begin to take change seriously and will stand up to that kind of use of force if they did it in one fell swoop. So you take the boil frog approach. And you will put up with it And those that seek to control you will eventually take over your life, your nation, your church, your future, inch by inch. And with a boil frog approach, all of a sudden you find yourself boiling to death because they turned up the heat slowly. Because you won't feel assaulted if this takeover is done incrementally. If they tried to do this quickly and overnight, you would resist with everything that you have. I mean, just think about it. When someone comes up to you angry about something, to kick you out or to force you to do something, you respond with force. But if they do it inch by inch, if they are gentlemanly about it, if they make sure that you as well keep that same course of decorum, Well, they can change the whole game. And you might even feel good about it. And you might even feel weird about resisting it. You're going to think, I don't want to get out of step. I don't want to be known as that guy, that disagreeable man, that man who is quick to anger. While your nation is being overthrown. Where, if you're a Christian and you believe that you're part of the Bride of Christ, 
where the bride is being raped and molested and torn from you. Now, if you really believe that the church was the bride of Christ, how would you really react if it was your bride, your wife? I guarantee you, you probably wouldn't be a gentleman about it. You'd probably take swift action, even if it meant your life. Well, that's the kind of action that's going to be necessary for you to save your nation, and your church. Now, I'm not saying violence, but you need to respond quickly to these things and with force. And by force, I mean by naming the people that are doing them. We'll talk more about that later. But those that are taking the boil frog approach, that are expecting you to stay patient and docile, well, they know that They know that you're not going to want to be that guy that stands out from the crowd. And they are counting on you, or they are counting on that you will be a useful idiot and not push back. They are counting on you to be a reasonable man. The kind of man that doesn't overreact. The kind of man who won't fight for his family, his church, or his nation. They are counting on you looking at others who are calling everyone to action and calling them unreasonable, even though you are in the middle of fifth-generational warfare. They know that if this is done in baby steps, you know, kind of like when you're going to take your dog's favorite toy from him so he won't growl or even notice, you know, you do it bit by bit slowly. They expect you to do nothing that will actually prevent them from changing our nation into an autocratic state. And how quickly can all this happen? How quickly can it go to the point of no return? Very quickly. Within months. Just look at Australia and New South Wales. And if we continue at this pace with all of us just reacting with blog posts to their assault on America, then we will wake up two years from now and say, Wow, man, what happened? How did we lose everything? And maybe, quote, I wish I would have known that this was going to happen back in 2021. I would have done something about it. No, you probably wouldn't have. Because you wanted to be looked at as the reasonable man. You didn't want to stand out in your tribe. You see, it would take a leader to actually step out from being that reasonable man. To start taking charge. But only you can really determine that. That's up to you. But the first thing that you're going to have to do is reckon with yourself. You need to go look in the mirror and say, and basically admit, we will not be going back to normal. And if I don't act soon and do things that my tribe would consider unreasonable, then my family will not have a future in a constitutional nation. Folks, you must wake up to the reality of our situation. You must snap out of your mind's natural inclination to try to get back to a center point of desiring normalcy. Because, to be completely honest, if you want any kind of normalcy that resembles what we had in 2019, well you're going to have to do an awful lot of struggling, an awful lot of resisting, an awful lot of sacrificing, an awful lot of leading to go back to normal. The rewarding part is you get to decide what that normal is if we are able to resist this massive color revolution that's around us. Now remember, In all these things that we're discussing, their main goal is complete control. For example, of all the things that I could talk about, I think I'm going to start with this. And this is obviously not the thing that everybody else is talking about right now, which I will eventually address this week. You know, what's going on with Merrick Garland, with CRT, what's happening with the situation with the ports and the lack of deliverables. 
what's happening right now in China and Taiwan. Maybe you didn't know about that. Well, maybe World War III is about ready to break out. But what I'm going to choose to talk about today is one of the areas that they must control. Well, digital currency is now on the horizon. So when we talk about a digital currency, remember that digital currency is about three things. Number one, digital currency is about surveillance, watching every penny that you spend. So when we talk about someone looking into your bank account or the IRS looking into your bank account for, let's say, as low as $600 in transactions, well, digital currency takes care of all of that because they track every penny. Number two, control. Making sure that you don't buy guns or alcohol or that you, you know, if you give to the wrong organization, let's say a C3 or a C4, they're quite aware of that then. There is no ability to keep things private. Everything is completely transparent. Number three, one of the main reasons you go to a digital currency is because you can achieve and control and have forever negative interest rates. The government wants to borrow money endlessly and spend money that they don't have. And the best way to devalue the debt that they accumulate in proposals that they can't afford, such as the Green New Deal, is to make interest rates negative. If you make interest rates negative, you devalue your own debt. Well, how does a digital currency play in? Well, first of all, it's because people don't like negative interest rates. I mean, let's face it. Would you want to put money in the bank if it's going to lose value every day? Well, you wouldn't do that. What have people done in nations or in economies when there's negative interest rates? Well, they take the cash out of the bank and they put it under their mattress or they put it in a safe. But if we're in a digital currency, what if there was no cash to take out of the bank and it was only digital? And every day the government took more and more from negative interest rates. It would be an easy way to overtax everyone. Because if physical cash is gone, well, remember, every communist loves negative interest rates. That's how you can fund social programs. So how is the Biden administration going to do this? Well, here comes Biden's nominee for comptroller of our banks in the United States. Sale Omarova. And Sale Omarova received her education graduating in 1989, and I kid you not, at Moscow State University through a Lenin Personal Education Scholarship. That's no joke. Let me go ahead and state that again. She went to Moscow State University in the Soviet Union graduating in 1989, and she was on a Lenin Personal Education Scholarship. Now, 30 years after graduating from Moscow State University, she still believes that the Soviet economic system is far superior to the U.S. banking system and that our banking system should be remade or reset into the Soviet model. That's Biden's nominee for comptroller. Now, the Wall Street Journal states this about Biden's nominee to be over the entire U.S. banking system. And I quote, Some Trump appointees were ridiculed for having supported the elimination of their agencies. Ms. Omarova wants to eliminate the banks she's being appointed to regulate. And we quote from Ms. Omarova, Until I came to the U.S., I couldn't imagine that things like gender pay gaps still existed in today's world. Say what you will about the old USSR. There was no gender pay gap there. Market doesn't always know best, end quote. That's what she tweeted in 2019. After Twitter users criticized her ignorance, she added a caveat, quote, 
I never claimed women and men were treated absolutely equally in every facet of Soviet life. But people's salaries were set by the state in a gender-blind manner. And all women got very generous maternity benefits. Both things are still a pipe dream in our society. End quote. Now, there is certainly a discussion to be had about Soviet maternity benefits, even if the comparison with the U.S. is less straightforward than Amarova seems to imply. But as to Omarova's point about the gender pay gap, which is not, incidentally, something that her caveat properly addresses, the reality is that while formally men and women were paid the same in the 1930s, pipe smoking Joseph Stalin, of course, boasted that, quote, the woman question has been solved, end quote. The reality, so far as it can be deduced from Soviet statistics, was that women were paid roughly two-thirds as much as men. As anyone who, like Omarova, grew up in the USSR knew, the difference between formal and real rights was substantial. So let's go back to what the Wall Street Journal was saying. Quote, Ms. Omarova thinks asset prices, pay scales, capital, and credit should be dictated by the federal government. In two papers, she has advocated expanding the Federal Reserve's mandate to include the price levels of systemically important financial assets, as well as worker wages. As I like to say at the Modern University, from each according to her ability to each according to her needs. In a recent paper, The People's Ledger, she proposed that the Federal Reserve take over consumer bank deposits, quote, effectively end banking as we know it, end quote, and become the, quote, the ultimate public platform for generating, modulating, and allocating financial resources in a modern economy, end quote. She'd also like the U.S. to create a central bank digital currency, as Venezuela and China are doing, to, quote, redesign our financial system and turn Fed's balance sheet into a true people's ledger, end quote. She tweeted this summer. So what could possibly go wrong? Ms. Omarova believes capital and credit should be directed by an accountable bureaucracy and intelligentsia. She has recommended a national investment authority with members overseen by an advisory board of academics to finance a big and bold climate agenda. Sounds like the Green Infrastructure Bank, the Senate rejected. She'd also like a politically and structurally independent public interest council of highly paid academics with broad subpoena power to supervise financial financial regulatory agencies, including the Fed. The council, she explained, would not be subject to the constraints and requirements of the administrative process. In other words, Ms. Omarova would like to be above the law. She, don't, she doesn't want to have to deal with all the regulations and things that we put in place that would control her powers. Back to the article. As comptroller, Ms. Omarova would supervise some 1,200 financial institutions. While she couldn't enact her people's agenda without legislation, she would have sweeping powers to punish banks that don't follow her dictas. Now, as a reminder, recall how financial regulators during the Obama presidency pressured banks to cut off credit to pay day lenders. Now, from what is understood from the Wall Street Journal, their sources say the president nominated Ms. Omarova over the objections of Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen who is a radical as well, but not as radical as Ms. Omarova, to whom the comptroller reports. Well, history shows that ideas of this sort from Ms. Omarova are a prescription for economic disaster. But they also are about something else, which is power. And in Omarova's case, power for her class, something that Lenin would have appreciated. And in today's world, almost certainly would have supported. More broadly, though, she appears to want the rewriting of much of our economy into a technocratic way. And if you recall, I've been very much warning you about the coming technocracy. That is what is coming. The rule by experts, if you will. 
and not by the people, by those that sovereignly have a constitution with our government. And of course, this is a recipe for economic catastrophe, but those who control the sort of system that would emerge as a result of this rewriting will do very well indeed. Now, notice the role that Omarova allocates for academics, some of whom, at least, should, she reportedly thinks, be highly paid. She says, and so we are at a point in our history where monetary instruments are about to be changed. Now, that is the full intention of placing a Soviet-educated person in charge of our banking system, a person who will be hell-bent on disrupting and dismantling our capitalist system. This person is an ideologue. She is a communist Marxist ideologue, and she's about to be in charge of our banks if she's approved. Now I need you to think about this for just a moment. Who are the insurrectionists? Who are those that are actually seeking to take control and overturn our nation, to overturn our constitution? Well, it's those that are in power right now. The president of the United States has nominated a woman who is a Marxist to have control over our banking system. Now, at the same time, the Biden administration is pressuring lawmakers to enact a controversial plan requiring banks to turn over to the Internal Revenue Service detailed information about inflows and outflows of almost all American bank accounts. This is at the very same time. Now, again, Treasury Secretary Jenny Yellen and IRS Commissioner Charles Redding sent letters to lawmakers this week asking Congress to include in tax hike legislation a requirement that banks report annual transaction data on accounts with $600 or more that have $600 worth of transaction over the year. Now, don't think that this is going to stop at $600. I remember back in the day when it was quite a problem that they were asking people to report if there were any transactions over $10,000. We were freaking out about that. Well, now it's 600 bucks. What makes you think that it won't eventually be extended to $1? Because if you set the precedent at $600, the next step will be $400, then $200, then $50, then $10, and then $1, maybe even one penny. Because the technocratic state must have total control. Total and complete control over your money, over our money, over your funds. And why is this happening? Well, this was clearly stated by Marx and Engels in the Communist Manifesto. And I quote, The communists disdain to conceal their views and aims. They openly declare that their ends can be attained only by the forcible overthrow of all existing social conditions. Let the ruling classes tremble at a communistic revolution. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have a world to win. End quote. And believe me, they are here to win your world, to lead a revolution. And first, as was just laid out, that their ends, their goals can be attained only by the forcible overthrow of all existing social conditions. In other words, everything that is currently must be overthrown to make sure that the goals of the future are attained. So they are overthrown now, destroyed now, and then they can build back better, which is building back in a model that is a globalist, socialist, borderless, constitutionalist, authoritarian, corporatist algoocracy, Rule by algorithm through AI in the Internet of Things. And for this to work, they must control everything. Down to the last molecule. 
There are so many other things happening right now, but I really need for you to take a moment to understand what moment we are in right now. We are in a hinge moment in history. And how you respond right now in this nation, in this moment, may be the thing that determines whether or not there will be free men in the future. This administration and this Congress are hostile to the United States of America and to our Constitution. If you are someone who is employed, how this administration's actions affect your employment contract if the U.S. dollar is not the standard of currency in the future. If you live in a home that you have a 15 mortgage on, or you are on a five or six year point in that 15 year mortgage, what happens if the monetary instruments all change? If you are in a 501c3 or a ministry and depend on donations, what happens if the digital currency you receive has been degraded due to negative interest rates? For that matter, what if the doctrine that you teach, if you aren't teaching the anti-racist doctrine of the Gospel Coalition and embracing the green agenda, who is to say that your C3 status is removed and funds are suspended in your new digital currency account because your ESG scores are low? This is right around the corner. Is any of this starting to hit you yet? There needs to be a sense of urgency right now. This isn't business as normal. This isn't business as usual. This isn't life as normal. This isn't ministry as usual. Are you beginning to understand the implications of a Biden presidency and his global mutual build back better plan? It is all build back Bolshevik. It is Biden breaking backs, breaking everything that we have in our nation that makes it work. It's breaking your freedoms, your ability to have free speech, to to determine by your conscience and what you believe, how you conduct your religion. Because it is control. Control of your spending. Control of your saving. Control of your speech. Control of your life. They are taking full control of your entire life. And I want to take a second and be completely transparent with you. They are actually moving slower than I thought that they would be moving. I knew that this was going to be happening, but I thought they were going to be quicker about it. No. Each time that they make a move, they test to see how you respond. And then make the next step. I expected this change really to be radically quick from January through April or May. But it appears that this was going to be much slower in the boil frog approach. That's how they're doing this. But one thing I can assure you. If you don't live in fear... If you can cast off the facade of being a winsome, soft man and be acting as a man who is here to protect his family and his nation, if you speak out boldly, if we can move as quickly as we did from 2017 until now against CRT, when in many cases it was only me and a few other guys, a couple of discernment bloggers maybe, that were taking the stand, if you can stand like that, And if you are willing to be called someone who is out of order. But lead. Leading means that you will have to be out of order. Then we might have a chance. You know, because in the wider culture, and I understand this isn't in the Christian culture, in the wider culture, let's go Brandon is a real thing. People have had enough. But they need leadership. And that leadership begins with you. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. (laughs) 